Well, here I am now, standing on O'Connell Bridge in Stevens Green, Dublin. Dublin has the distinction of having two of many things. It has two cathedrals, it has two universities, it has two canals, the Grand and the Royal, and it has two O'Connell Bridges, and this is one of them. Now, 350 years ago, this was Ellen Hoare's meadow. In fact, there was neither one thing nor the other. It was neither in the city, nor it was neither in the liberties. I suppose that's why the corporation gave it to a woman. Ellen Hoare had a very good business mind. She set it all out in plots, let it out, and reserved a certain portion of the green for a park. Now, anyone that bought a plot around the green was supposed to plant six sycamore trees. But you the jibbles living around the green planted nothing. It wasn't until the 18th century when the lordly and stately mansions began to go up around the green. In 1815, they put a railings all around it. And you had to live in the lordly mansions before you got a key to the gate. Oh, no poor or working class could come into this green. It was only for the gentry. No working class people would be allowed in whatsoever. But there's a man over there that changed all that. Mr. Arthur Guinness, Lord Ardalon himself, who were of the goodness of his heart, threw open Stephen's Green for the poor people of Dublin. Ivy House, the one-time home of another Guinness, Sir Benjamin Lee Guinness, who will always be remembered in Ireland as the man who restored St. Patrick's Cathedral in the Liberties. So the Green is a university. It's an open university. It's teeming with historical information and beauty. And all those young people you see studying today they're all the lawyers, the doctors, the barristers, and the professors of tomorrow. Stephen's Green is suitable for anything. It's a lovely place to relax among the flowers and the birds and the breeze and the trees and the shrubs and the ducks and the drakes. <laughs>